good morning. Since I removed my post from yesterday, I thought I would take an opportunity to talk about maybe a specific kind of angle or two regarding blues improvisation. I do want to announce that I got a class tomorrow, so if you've missed those announcements, I've got a class tomorrow. Now you know. <laughs> it's the five chord and turnaround area of 12 bar blues that we're going to examine in this class, and it's going to be ideas from Charlie Musselwhite, ideas from James Cott and Kim Wilson, a Gary Primich idea, and ideas from my brain. And I'm going to actually do more than just teach you those ideas. We're going to talk about, and I can demonstrate a little today, talk about um, kind of like a bit of a formulaic approach to working and building your turnaround and improvisation area. So step one is making sure you know what a turnaround is and whether you can identify if there's a turnaround in a song. Not every song has one, but we're talking about bars 11 and 12. Hey, thanks, Denny. Appreciate everybody tuning in. So you're playing this slow blues in F. You got a, I've got a B flat harmonica. If you want to learn more about that class, just go to harmonica123.com. And at the bottom of the homepage, it's the first sale item. The class is on sale. So it's kind of a great one to check out. These are high quality Zoom classes. They're all recorded if you cannot make it live. And I've got notes coming to the attendees uh, probably early evening today. So here we come up on bar, what, nine? So in class, I want to talk about those root note common area turnarounds and then, hey, what's up, Hank? And then get into like, what's beyond that? These kind of like general rules of sometimes leaving this stuff alone will come up. We'll talk about when and why you might want to not play these all the time. But yesterday when I did a stream, I, I was talking about space as it relates to phrasing and how you can use rest in your music appropriately. And a slow blues is perfect for that, right? Because we can sit here and just, if you rush a slow blues, you kind of miss the point. It's like a slow dance. You don't need to be break dancing with your partner. <laughs> so check it out. Examples of good space and how you can change space. Some of this just chill for a minute. Notice how I hesitated? I didn't play it right when you might have expected. Things like that. Don't always come in right on the chord change. This is a big part of slow blues and it's the perfect kind of way to work on creating more space in your music just the art of like uh patience and, and practicing not playing sometimes which will force you to listen so carefully to what you're playing to which will ultimately guide you as to what to play and when to play it yes 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 and in the stream that i did yesterday i talked about some gear i'm letting go of thanks to the the companies and the folks that make this gear that I, that I do use, um, but I have some stuff that I'm letting go of. I have their blessings. Lone Wolf is one of them. Thanks, Randy. But this is going up to somebody. It's up for grabs. So if you want to grab this, 
and you live in the U.S., just hit me an email uh, at uh, hit me up with the email at where info at harmonica one two three dot com. That's a great reverb pedal. Also from Lone Wolf, this is kind of more like a funky keyboard sounding pedal. Does all sorts of cool things with octaves, and that's nice. Those are both going to come in at one hundred and forty five bucks if you want it, and you'll need to cover the shipping. U.S. Same with this. Um, you'll cover shipping, but it's a little more expensive. I think I have this priced at like two thirty. Don't. It's somewhere right around there. This is a pretty much brand new Ultimate Fifty Seven with the Bulletizer from Blows Me Away Productions, who makes the best microphones and accessories out there. If you don't know Greg Human, please go to BlowsMeAway.com. It's a great website. This he's brilliant and he makes the best products ever. I play his microphones. Uh, I've been playing his hand-built wood mics for years. They're incredible. So those items are up for grabs. Um, yep, it's got the volume control. It's going to be nice. Somebody's going to get a sweet, sweet mic and some nice pedals there. All right, back to the clip. Let's talk about a few other angles on the turnarounds. I said I would do that, so it's a good way to wrap up today's session. Uh, I'll just play some examples of, of ways you can treat them without really trying to teach you. I think the examples... Uh, are the best way to, to impart that sort of wisdom to you, that, that experience that I have, and show you how you might do it, just, just to inspire you, maybe. Oh, man, I kept missing stuff. Every time I put a track on, I just feel lost. Well, well hey, man, what's up, Tony? Um, if you feel lost, this is take an angle. That's, what the, that's why I put blues improvisation angles. Like pick, One angle is space. One angle could be of uh, really concentrating on the how you treat the turnarounds, but just relaxing and not really trying too hard on the rest of it. An angle could be um, phrasing within the riffs themselves and how you change that up. An angle could be tonal variance. An angle could be a very specific technique. Take an angle to help you feel focused. But step one in jamming to a track is you got to have groove. And a slow blues is challenging, right? Because it's not like a shuffle where you're going, you know, you're sitting there going where you can play this rhythm. So when you're playing slow blues, you gotta hold some notes and carve out some phrasing. Hold a note. Then let it relax for a minute. Just breathe. Try to take a minute and shape what you're playing is my recommendation. Take a note, hold it for a minute, let it say something, and play with it either with the texture of your hands or technique-wise, take that area. Like, take the four draw. Everyone goes to four draw, so let me just show you what I mean. Play variances on it. That's dirty and open. Dirty and closed. Vibrato. Warble. Single note. Playing around with the single note bending. Now, that's focused playing because I'm not trying to move anywhere. I'm trying to say something with less. So it allows you to have a minute to feel what you're doing. And that's, that's a good approach. Just take a hole and do that with one hole. I have the worst headache right now, you guys. It's killing me, so I'm gonna sign off soon. Ugh, but um, let me just show you what I mean one more time. helpful little couple ideas I think there's some good things that snuck in here today regarding kind of ways you could think about practicing with a track and 
take your improvisation to another level. Um, or you could join me in class tomorrow. I'm doing a whole thing on the improvisation angles for turnarounds in that five chord area where people are just playing the same old, same old. And that class is on sale. I'll put a link. I'll pin it in the comments, perhaps, and put it in the description of the video. Um, that's it. That's what I got today. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I have my next scheduled post coming Saturday mid-morning or so. So that'll just pop up if you want to learn about the five-hole draw bend and what's up with that note, how you can bring it into your playing. I'm going to give away four ways you can really take advantage of that note. It's a good note. It's an important place to utilize on the diatonic. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And I hope to see some of you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central in class. Hasta luego.